Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today I'm going to be watching Pacific Rim to see how accurate the engineering scenes really are. I've always been a huge fan of this movie, I mean, I used to watch Gundam as a kid, and then Godzilla has just been like, the coolest movie for me all the time. And this is pretty much Gundam meets Godzilla, so I'm really excited for this. The world came together, pooling its resources and throwing aside old rivalries for the sake of the greater good. To fight monsters, we created monsters of our own. The Jaeger program was born. There were setbacks at first. The neural load to interface with the Jaeger proved too much for a single pilot. That is just a mirror function, and I mean, this technology exists already. It's like when you saw the pilot opening his hand and the Jaeger arm open, it's it's no different than you using a joystick to move a remote control car, but on a seriously massive scale. With a remote control car, if the car wasn't already programmed to move in reverse from an input on the remote, nothing that you do will move the car backwards. With this example, what we're seeing, like all the sensors along that guy's arm, what they're doing is just picking up the movements that this person is making and then just projecting them onto another medium, in this case, the Jaeger itself. Picking up movements using a sensor then replicating them is actually, and that's what the Xbox Kinect does. <laughs> the only difference is with the Kinect, it's taking in all of your movements, digitizing them, and then it's displaying them on a 2D screen. With this, it's taking all your movements and then it's using it to move something else, but it's not so far different. A two-pilot system was implemented. Left hemisphere, right hemisphere, pilot control. We started winning. Jaegers stopping kaijus everywhere. But the Jaegers were only as good as their pilots. At first, I didn't quite understand what the significance was of having two pilots. I mean, because a Jaeger is, in, in essence, just a giant exo exoskeleton with increased strength and mobility. I mean, I guess they said it was based on like DARPA um, fighter jet or something technology. So it could just be that one person in there is only responsible for movement and the other one is the one who's controlling all of the various like weapons that they have. And in order for you to actually communicate between the two people, you need to have that neural link between them. So that makes more sense. But I, st I still believe that it's going to be easier if you just have one pilot who knows the ins and outs of their Jaeger and they can just control that thing accordingly. I did give it some thought as to why they're not just remote controlled and it could be that there's a time delay between sending a signal and receiving it. The back to that remote control car example, when you click to move forward on that joystick, it's not actually instant. You gotta wait a few milliseconds for the signal to be sent, received, and then processed. Then the car will move forward. So when it comes to these Jaegers, when you have a movement that's occurring on a separate computer that's, I mean, I don't know, it's like a hundred miles away, okay? then what's going to happen is the signal has to be sent and then received by the Jaeger and then processed and then the movement will occur. The farther that you, the, the signal is from its receiving node, then the weaker that signal does become. So the signal strength will actually increase the closer you are to it, like within limits, and then it'll really, really decrease the farther you go from its node or from its origin. And this can be overcome by increasing the signal strength or using a more powerful microprocessor so that the commands are just executing much, much faster. Now, that time delay is not so long as to make a huge difference, especially considering that in the fight that we just saw, the kaiju wasn't like insanely fast, right? I mean, it's, it's fine if you're like a few milliseconds behind this thing. You're not actually putting anyone in danger that way as well. I don't see the necessity of having two Jaeger pilots physically there, in harm's way. I mean, there's no real advantage that they have. War clock. 
We reset it after every Kaiju attack. Keeps everyone focused. The frequency of attacks is accelerating. How long till the next reset? A week, if we're lucky. My experts believe there'll be a Kaiju attack even before that. One thing I will say that's very cool is they're walking around like an engineering plant, right? And something that movies miss very frequently is like those lines that are on the floor that you can see while they're walking. And they actually have them separated by like yellow and white and they're just like a regular black flooring. Those lines are used to indicate where it's safe to walk and as you just saw like when they stopped because you don't want to get hit by a forklift and those things are just flying back and forth inside of a plant. That was really good on the producers, the director, to get that detail perfect. Crimson Typhoon, China. One of the greatest. Assembled in Shansu. Full titanium core, no alloys. 50 diesel engines per muscle strand. Deadly precise fighter. Uh, why is it... I mean, he, he was bragging about it being a full titanium core with no alloys. When you create an alloy, actually the metal is much stronger. The reason that alloys are so much more powerful than uh, pure metals is because if you look at the molecular structure of a pure metal, it's just many of the same molecule with layers and layers and layers on top of each other. And it makes that a lot easier to uh, bend and shape it. An alloy is when you take two different metals and then you melt those down together, then you'll create a new metal. When you do this, you're taking the molecular structure of two different metals, mixing them together, so now there's no longer equal layers of the same molecule. All of these layers are irregular and not equally or evenly shaped. Because of this, it's gonna be much harder to bend and much more difficult to shape. That's why alloys are way more powerful, they're more durable, and they're sturdier. It's also more expensive to make, but when the world is coming to an end and everyone's pulling together their resources, I do not think it's going to really cause a rift. Jumbled all the Jaeger's electrical circuits. The hell is that? Lotus! I've never seen that before! Lotus! They're adapting. This isn't a defense mechanism, it's a weapon. Give me striker. Nothing, sir. The Mark V's digital. It's fried. It'll take me two hours to reroute the auxiliary. All the Jaegers think that they're digital. Not all of them, Marshal. Gypsy's analog. Digital versus analog. An analog signal will take into account all possible continuous values within a range. And this is what I mean by that. Let's say that you're sending a signal and we're gonna call that signal having a value of seven. It can be received as like a 6.8 to 7.2 because there's gonna be noise and interference between sending a signal and receiving it. In a digital signal, you can only have values of a one or a zero. It can only be binary values here. And what's happening is when you send a value of one and it's received as a 0.9 or a 1.1, that value is rounded to the nearest one or zero and then it's received as such. So what that means is that it's completely lossless and it's essentially perfect signal transference because all the noise in a digital signal is canceled out. Analog circuits are what use physical components like uh, resistors, inductors, um, op amps, things like that. And then digital circuits will use what are called logic gates. And these things are what you program into a computer and then they are processed through a microcontroller or a microprocessor and then the commands are executed. An analog circuit you can physically hold with your hand and you can point out the individual components and you can like look at it and say, okay, the current is starting from this source and it's going through this resistor into that op amp. Like you can point out the whole, like the whole, uh, you can point out the whole trail of where the current is traveling and how the power is distributed, like physically holding it, looking at it. In a digital signal, that's not gonna happen. You would have to open the computer and then see all the set programs that were values of ones or zeros, and then it'll show you the logic gate, but that is way more complicated and you're not gonna look at that thinking, okay, this is gonna be easy. Like Digital circuits are quite complicated because they can get really large very quickly. What we just saw is that the Kaiju release what is an EMP, and an EMP stands for an electromagnetic pulse. 
So EMPs are extremely powerful radio waves. And what's happening here is that these radio waves are being sent out as they showed in the movie, they look like a pulse. In reality, you can't physically see a radio wave with your own two eyes, like we saw that. But uh, the electrical circuits will feel it. <laughs> these radio waves get picked up by antenna and then those radio waves are then converted into electricity. An EMP is actually so strong that when it's released and picked up by these radios, the wires inside of a circuit act as antennas. So it just keeps on absorbing more and more of this powerful wave and more of this radio waves are being converted into, into electricity until there's such a power surge that all the circuit breakers just start pounding and then everything gets shut down. Analog circuits are really not affected by EMPs. Um, if anything, actually, an EMP might turn it on. But if it's already on, it might just be like a glitch or like a second, and then all and it just keep flowing as normal. But it will definitely fry a digital circuit because that spike of voltage through a microprocessor will completely fry all the digital circuits. So there's no more information being transferred or received. And that's why digital circuits will get shut down in an EMP. That movie was awesome. And I always have fun re-watching it because it's just amazing to watch like these giant robots pretty much kill giant monsters. I mean, it's, it's built for us and it was amazing. And the engineering in this was pretty spot on. Uh, the, the biggest thing that I saw that was completely wrong was that when that kaiju was sending that EMP and it hit the city and the Jaegers, uh, you won't see an EMP. It, it's a radio wave. So that like pretty much ring of light that it formed and just sent out, we wouldn't be able to see that as human beings. As far as building a Jaeger goes, it's, I mean, in theory, pretty much anything is possible, right? But it, it is practical to think that we can do this. It's just those machines are built with one purpose is to fight Kaiju. And there's really no reason for us to even engage in that sort of war warfare. I mean, right now, all the hype is about AI, not about giant analog machines but i gotta say like the directors and the producers really nailed this one like it, it was a great movie and the engineering scenes were pretty spot on um it's still one of my favorite movies <laughs> i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did be sure to give it a thumbs up and comment below what you'd like me to watch in the future and commentate over it. until next time you guys stay fresh stay golden